Today on Car Trucks, welcome to a muddy field full of lots of lovely classic cars. Just over there is the wonderful Western Park and today we are at the first of the 2024 Classic Shows events, the Western Park Classic Car Show in the level MX-5 in F Sports and Convertible and as you can see everything's being categorised, we're here very very early to get all the classic cars arriving down that lovely approach there. So today I think I'll hop behind the camera as I'm sure Dad doesn't want to film me all day and let's have a look at what's arriving. But the interesting thing about today is there's quite a few tyre tracks here today and it's a little bit boggy so let's see what's going on. The field has claimed another casualty, this time a V12 7 Series BMW. Yeah, I think we are going to be getting a few classic cars stuck here today, but I think now let's have a look at some of the arrivals, of course, focusing on some of the older cars, which is what we do on car traction. We've got this lovely 535, I think BMW 5 Series, very, very cool. I do love the shape of those. Nice silver sort of Alpina style wheels. This is one of the first big classic car shows of 2024. We've been to a fair few breakfast classic car meets and similar things, but we haven't been to many of the proper big shows. Now let's have a little look at this. I'm getting sidetracked already, as we do like a good pre-war car and we do like a bit of memorabilia. And randomly here is a very nice Shell Max petrol can. Don't exactly know why that's there. We've got this lovely pre-war Lanchester here in Twin Tone with the green and the black. Being a Lanchester having a pre-selected gearbox as do many of pre-war cars. I believe Lanchester's pretty much all of them do have pre-selected gearboxes. Beautiful condition this car. The chrome is absolutely immaculate. Yeah, it's great to see. I do love the look of the pre-war cars. Lovely domed lamps. What a great start today at the Western Park Classic Car Show. Here we've got quite the setup. We've got SO two gallon petrol can, rally chopper mark two or something, and a very, very cool British Leyland here, Montego Estate, or probably an Austin Montego, yeah, two litre SLXI, there you go. What an incredible time what this is. This is pretty much in its new showroom condition. Very interesting floor mats there. Hello. Not very talkative, incredible interior, lovely condition. I remember seeing a race prepped MG Montego recently at one of the breakfast meets, the Crew Heritage. But this is an incredibly original car, very low mileage. Very, very interesting old Montego here. Let's have a stroll down to the entrance down there, I think, and have a look what's going in. Is this your car, sir? Yes, sir. Being pointed towards the mileage, there we go, 41,678 since new. Is this car pretty much original? Yes, in 2016 it had done 39,000. <laughs> wow, that's not bad at all. So never restored, never welded or anything? No, no welding. Wow, what an incredible time warp. Montego Estate. That's where it came from. Uh, we've got the sales brochures and the original where this car was sold. Got plenty of cars still rolling in. I think now let's have a stroll down to the entrance all the way over there. Seems to be a bit of a classic BMW theme up here. We've got a wonderful 840 Ci, 4 litre V8, and that 8 series, more modern. 4 series, I believe that is, and a very cool old 5 series. So many modern classics here today. Let's have a look at this wonderful Rover P3, I want to say this one is with a slightly wider shape of grille, a Rover 75 from 1940, indicated by the tax disc. This will probably have a lovely six on the engine up front. I do love these beautiful old Rovers, such a lovely car. This is probably the sports saloon with a slightly lower roof line, which does look fantastic. That would be a wonderful, wonderful car to drive. Super, super smooth, very quiet. Six on the engine, I do love the look of that in wonderful dark blue. Incredible chrome once again. The condition of the classic cars we've seen here so far today, absolutely wonderful. Effectively a pre-war design, even though this car does seem to be from the mid-war. And of course, these were later replaced by the likes of the Rover P4 in the 50s, I want to say, but these will always me, my preference, the lovely separate headlamps. I do love the look of the pre-war cars. 
This Audi S8 should be alright, I believe that's all wheel drive, although it looks like this Rover may be struggling a little bit. Classic car shows are so much fun, aren't they? Go on, Dad. Hmm. Front wheel drive, not great for this. Oh, they managed to get the Merc out, well done. We seem to have a crack team of pushers. Oh dear. A V6 Rover 75. Right now, I keep getting so distracted. Right now, definitely going to look at the classic cars coming in to the Western Park Classic Car Show. Quite a queue of beautiful classic cars rolling in now. We've got a very cool Morris Minor 1000 on some mini light wheels. A great old Ford, I believe this is a quite a low spec Granada, probably, actually, yeah. It's quite an interesting one, 2.8 GL, another Ford Granada here. Oh, there's so many lovely things, but no, while the cars are moving, I will look at them rolling into the show. Very cool, let's go Mexico. Rush Minor Traveller, so many beautiful classic cars here today. First Italian classic of the day is the wonderful Fiat 600, no, not a 500. That's got a mighty 600cc engine, Morris Minor Traveller. Great old Austin 12 is this one in the pre-60s section. We will look at all these wonderful classic cars later on in the day. Looks like the American section is starting to form. There's a Dodge, is that? Dodge Charger, I think it is. That's a bit of an interesting one. There's a Ford Fiesta, very low, very modified, with some very nice Heller spot lamps. And just behind it is a wonderful car, which... I will definitely have to have a look at later on. It is a standard 8. Well, it might be a 10. Is it a standard 8 or 10? Need to have a look whether it has a boot or not. Ah, it is a standard 10. The booted model with this has got the 948cc standard SC unit in it and a boot. So that's a lovely little car. So nice to see a little standard. Very common in their time in the 1950s, but now they're very rare little cars. Quite a common classic these days, Mark II Cortina, there's a pairing of them rolling in now. The former one on Rostals, as is the latter. Very sharp looking saloons aren't they, do like the look of those. 1600Es, Ford Capri, making a wonderful Burberry V6 sound. Got a four door Ford Cortina, Cortina GT, complete with dog in the back. Quite a late Mini. An anniversary edition, great looking Triumph Stag, complete with hard top. I've seen that one before. Another Mini, and wow, another standard 10. This one's got a slightly more basic trim level. That is in really lovely, usable condition. I do love that. Need to just get a standard 8. We've had the bigger 10s here, but we need to see a standard 8. Bit far for us in the standard eight. Now this is a Scimitar SC1 or SS1. That's it. Scimitar SS1, very rare car. Lotus Elan, the late ones, is the M100. I believe those are called the Elan S2. Very cool Triumph, making a lovely sound. Great sounding 2.5 litre straight six engine in that one. I do like that. There's so much going on. There's a Volvo 440, an E30 BMW. It is so nice to be back at the big classic car show, so refreshing. MGB, first of those of the day. Great looking little Riley Elf, complete with many, many badges on the front. The Riley variant of the Mini. Very, very cute little car there. I do like the look of those. Just behind that in Harvest Gold is this MGB Roadster, competes on Mini Lights. A Ford Escort. Very cool Alpina 7 Series BMW. This is the sort of thing that might have a few traction issues when it gets up towards the end of the field. Cool Alpina wheels. I do like the spec of this car. Good looking cars, those 7 Series, aren't they? Automatic gearbox, of course. BMW Z4M, the, the hard top coupe version, a 3 litre straight six and a half one. Very cool. A Rover P6, a 2 litre single car, probably. Nice and original. Got a little, there's an Opal Corsa. This one, bit of a rally car seems to be with roll cage. One of the loudest cars here today with a very large exhaust on the back. The wonderful Dancer, not Dancia, Lancia Delta Integrale. The HF. 
that's a cool livery on that, the Martini livery, Ford Capri, complete with trailer, repairing a Ford Capri, he's got the red one up front, and a very cool bit of a wide body on this green one, yeah, I like the look of that, the pinstripes as well, very cool, great looking wide body, it's got a 3 litre V6 in this one, that's a great looking wide body, I love the size of the ducktail spoiler on that one as well, a Capri GT, that is wonderful car, really like the look of that. Sounds fantastic as well. The later Ford Capri. There, a 2.8 V6 in that one. Bit of another modified Capri, quite wide steel wheels on this one. Sounds like a four cylinder. Yes, another Ford Capri, a laser. That's an immaculate condition. That is that is impressive actually. A two litre, that is in such incredible condition. Rover SD1. A Ford Capri here in blue, another four cylinder or a gear spec car. So many variants of these Capris. We've seen so many sort of 80s Fords. These are very, very popular classic cars or modern classics as I'd probably call them, but I think they're classics in their own right now. A Capri S here. A great looking Austin A40 Farina on mini lights and Mark 1 there, quite rare now. Most of the A40s you see are the Mark 2s. But yeah, Mark 1 Austin A40 Farina, I'm sure Dad up there filming for Old Classic Car will quite like that one as we have got one of these, it was his first car. Just mind that, it's yet another Ford Granada, so many of those here today. Great looking Rolls Royce, beyond the Porsche 924. I'm sure that's probably one of the most comfortable cars to be rolling into the Western Park Classic Car Show in today. Triumph TR7 Rally Car, and a great looking Citroen Traction Avant, left hand drive, so original French car there. Very, very cool, more modern Jaguar, a lovely MG Magnet, I do like the look of these. You have the Wolseley variant, the MG, the slightly sportier variant, great looking car there. Really do like the old MG Magnets. Nice big rear window for visibility as well, wonderful Triumph Roadster, late 40s. Very, very grand front on those ones. Great looking Jensen Interceptor here. I believe this is the Ferguson 4 model, the four wheel drive one, which is super, super rare. I think it is, the FF Ferguson 4. So the four wheel drive system on that Jensen Interceptor, and that's rare. A Lotus Elan Plus 2. It's just a non stop stream of beautiful classic cars here. Hope you guys are enjoying it. If you are, let me know in the comments because I certainly am. So great to be back at the big shows. Lovely Rover P3, I think, Tora. That's a good looking car, that, isn't it? Beautiful old Rover. That is absolutely gorgeous, I love that. VW Camper, making its distinctive Beetle type sound. Ford Anglia Super, that's a nice colour, that. I do like that. A trendy two-tone, one of the replica Ferraris. And a very lovely original Moggy Miner Traveller. That looks like a really nice usable car, perhaps original paint, looks like an older resto. Lovely patina. No, unfortunately this is not a Ferrari 250 California, it is a Z3. That is looking like a Ferrari 250 California. Mark II Escort with the Sibia, I think that's how you pronounce it, lamps, bit of a racer there. Nice liver as well, a 1.6 in there. XR3i Cabriolet. Another replica Ferrari, I'm not sure what that's based on. Meant to be a F430. Rover. Another MG. And a bit of a crazy Mini Clubman, Tamworth Mini Maniacs. What a sight that is. Good sound of straight cut gears. Sounds like it has straight cut gears. The distinctive A series, of course, in any Mini. Bit of a showing of those here today. This is a Lotus XL, I think this one is. Sounding very sporty, sure is. Now, what is this? This is a Simca Arond, I believe. Very, very cool car. Simca Arond, but like a little coupe. That's really cool. Yeah, that's probably one of the rarest cars here today. I'm pretty sure that's French, being a Simca. Beautiful car there. Column change, gearbox. That's super cool, I really love the look of that, what a beautiful hard top. Really, really cool. The Toyota MR2 Mark 1 and a few more minis, but this is super rare. I believe it's a Simca Arond, 
I'll have to go and consult Dad on that one, I'm sure he'll know. That's such a gorgeous little car, that. Here are some more modified minis from the same Tamworth Club. Whoa, what is the rear windscreen on that one? Clubbin. And a very cool little Wolseley Hornet. A great looking Ford Granada. Those do look super cool. Very nice whims as well on that one. And the interior, exactly the same colour as the car on the outside, which is very, very of its period. Series 3 Land Rover. Huge knobbly tyres on that one, I like that. Very cool little minivan, quite a late one actually, that one having a British Leyland badge on the front. More modern mini. Oh, it's a bit muddy here. Not as muddy as the field though. Mark II Golf GTI. More modern MG, I think we'll gloss over that one. Skoda. And a very cool BMW 5 Series. This one goes to the likes of Crew, we've seen it before. 535 I, I believe that one is pretty much daily driven. Mark 1 Cortina here, console Cortina, this one being one of the first ones. That's a very early car there. Quite an interesting Alfa Romeo, what model is that? Alfa Romeo 146 Ti. Just behind that, a few more modern classics. We've got a Ford Mustang. I'm sure that will grace the American section. Left hand drive, making its V8 burbles. Very interesting Vox, was it a Corsa or that's an Astra? Yeah, Astra 1.6i. And a Maestro. That's an original police car, that one. Seen that one at the likes of Crew before. A base spec car, which was originally a police car. So that's actually quite an interesting little car. A Suzuki GT250. I'm afraid I'm just reading off the side of that one. Very cool Corvette Stingray. Of course, left hand drive. These were manual and automatic. Probably more of them going to be automatic. And a Skoda with a very cool looking little race prep mini in the back. I do like the look of that Clubman with four Lucas spot lamps on the front. That's a cool little car that isn't it? Proper little racer. Mark II Golf GTI. And dwarfing this Jaguar S-Type is this. This is a huge Massey Ferguson, one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. 1150. Very, very loud. Wow, that's incredible, that. The sort of thing you see tractor pulling. I've never seen a Massey Ferguson of that era that big. That's an incredible bit of kit. Just behind that, also getting dwarfed, is this Jaguar X300 or X308. And another beautiful Ford Cortina. This looks like a super original little car. Not the earliest ones, I believe this is known as the Airflow one. So it's slightly later, being on a D-Reg. Lovely two-door. Super, super original condition. The Cortina Super, that one is. That's a gorgeous little car. I really like the look of that. More modern Rovers. That Rover 75 sure is. A more modern Jaguar F-Pace. Not a fan of those, I'm afraid. And a Jaguar XK. I spy with my little eye a few proper lovely British classics and another Mark 1 Austin A40 Farina. Let's focus on the first of these cars. This is a Riley RM. These came as the 1.5 litre and a 2.5 litre. I think this is this 1.5 litre. I think it is. Lovely two tone. Now, this is called yet another Mark 1 Austin A40 Farina. This is in pretty much exactly the same spec as Dad's one. I think ours had the grey roof as opposed to this one with the black roof. And this one is quite interesting as it's just got the boots. Some of these out of the hatchback but that one's quite an early one with just a normal boot at the back beautiful Daimler this is a Daimler Conquest I think it is the sort of thing you'd see on like period rallies and stuff let's have a look around the back for any badging I think that's a Daimler Conquest or something similar sort of quite late 40s very early 50s car very very cool Ford Fiesta ST an interesting Vauxhall, I'm not exactly sure what model this is, a Cavalier convertible. Very cool pinstriping down the side of that one. I believe it is a Cavalier convertible, how rare is that? Bit of a modified Austin A35, one Ross Styles here. A series burbling away very nicely. And an MGB GT in blue, that's a nice colour for that actually, I do like the look of that. Very big exhaust if you look under there. Nissan Micro, you know those are getting rarer now, future classics. 
And an interesting Morgan Minor wide body. Sounds like a diesel swap. I wonder if it's a Morris Minor chassis on a modern car. Because the, the interior looked like a modern car. Yet another Ford Capri S. So many of those here today. Really good showing of the classic Fords. And wow, is this a Vauxhall Tigra convertible? I think it is. Quite an early one. Or just a Vauxhall Tigra hardtop. I'm not exactly sure. It's a bit later than my speciality. I think that's a Mark III Fiesta that's getting rare now. A Discovery with a Honda badge on the front for some reason. Honda Crossroad 7-seater. That looks more like a Discovery to me, but it seems to have Honda badges on it. I think that will have to be investigated. A bit more Americana now. Is this a Camaro or something? Yeah, 76 Chevy Camaro. Lovely MGTD just behind that. Jaguar XK. Wow, it's just... Look at the queues up there. Just never-ending stream of beautiful classic cars. So much here today at the Western Park Classic Car Show. We'll have a little look at this pair of MGs, the MGTFs. Just behind that is a very cool Series 2, I think, Jaguar e type We'll have to have a look around the back. I believe it is a Series 2, so still the six-cylinder engine, probably a 4.2 in this iteration. There was the Series 3, which is the V12, of course. But I think, yes, this is a Series 2 with this very lovely sounding 4.2 XK straight six. Quite a sporty sounding MGB GT debumpered. A bit more of a standard MGB GT in white. There's always a great show in a classic MGs. Very cool MG RV8. These came after the likes of the rubber bumper MGs, but of course with a huge V8 up front, which does sound very, very nice. MGB Roadster in green, that's a nice car that actually, that just looks really really nice in that colour. I do like the look of that, an MGTF, Sudden Streamer, Classic MG, it's another MG Magnet. This one won a, I think it won like the best car of the show, or at least the best 50s car or something. The last time it came to the Western Park Classic Car Show. I believe the owner restored that car, it was a bit of a wreck when he found it, a Fiat Panda in purple. And a very interesting MGB. I've seen this car once before with, is it an Ashley or something GT hardtop? It's a roadster car, but it's got this fascinating hardtop on. I believe it's like an Ashley hardtop or something, some sort of period mod. Bit of an interesting one there. It's been a while since I've seen all these cars. You know, these cars have pretty much all been tucked up over winter. Austin, Edo 16 car, or is it Morris? I don't know if there's a Morris actually. So Morris 1100 or 1300, modern Alpine just behind. I think I'll start working my way up here slowly to have a look around the actual classic car show itself. Of course, full walk around will be provided. What I do like if I just nip across here on the back of this MG Magnet is very cool little MG exhaust. Hopefully you can see that. I do like that. Very cool little mod. Here's the interesting MG. Quite a common car, but a very, very rare hardtop. And is it an 1100 or a 1300? Which size A series is it? It is the 1100. So 1100cc, 1 1.1 litre A series in the Morris 1100. Nice and original car, that. More modern Alpine A110 and an MGB GT. Many more classic British cars coming in now. Margie Minor 1000, MGB GT with a bit of an interesting bonnet intake, MG Midget 1500. That is the A series as opposed to the B series. And this is a V8 powered MGB. Very nice. Rover 75, more modern Mercedes, modern Focus, and just behind those is a tiny but gorgeous little Austin A3. 30, I believe that is the slightly rarer variant. Let's have a close look at this one. You see plenty of A35s, but this, I think with the chrome grill, is an A30. So this has got the 803 CCA series in it as opposed to the 948 in the 35. Yeah, an A30, that's quite a rare little car. Moggy Minor 1000, plenty of those here. And this is an A35 with the larger rear window and the slightly larger capacity engine up front. Both A series engines, oh, of course. Although actually that might be an A30 just with a painted grille because that's got the small rear window as well. Bit of a puzzler, very clean looking Triumph Stag, that's in lovely condition that one. VW Beetle, quite a late car. 
very nice blue Jaguar X-Type I think that is and just behind those is an absolutely wonderful Jaguar XK I believe this is an XK140 it's got the larger grille bar so yes a 140 XK Jaguar probably a 3.4 or 3.8 XK straight six they're lovely those aren't they nice spats on that one as well Audi TT MGB Roadster here with a couple of teddies in tow Range Rover I know I'm starting to work my way down I'm terrible aren't I MGTF with a bit of MGX power branding going on and an MGTF the older version though I've wandered my way up here now next to the replica Ferrari section with a gaggle of VW Beetles here making their air cooled distinctive sound and a Rover P6 2200 TC so that refers to the displacement 2200 CC 2.2 litre and a twin carb on this one making it the slightly more market variant probably one of the largest four cylinders you could get I believe and then of course the V8 with a twin carb 2.2 quite original condition there they're meant to be quite advanced cars to drive those Triumph TR6 has got the 2.5 litre straight six in this one this is an interesting one, I believe this is a Tickford Capri, yes, Aston Martin modified Tickford Capri, crazy wide body, incredible car, An incredible 59 I think that is Cadillac, I'd have to step back quite a bit to get that all in, Cadillac Coupe de Ville, I think that's the 59 model, and a great looking Austin Somerset in super original condition, the column shift on that one as well, one of the older cars here today, that's great to see out, great turnout today. Well, I don't think I've ever been known to have a look around an auto dribble and not buy anything. And lo and behold, £15 later, I have bought... Sorry, the lens cap keeps flicking in. I have bought this wonderful Red X10. Let's see what else we can find. Well, as you can see, I cannot be trusted anywhere near an auto dribble, of course. We've got the Red X10 for 15 which is very, very nice. I've always liked those. Big Serval tin for 8 Dad's filming me filming. That's very clean. And then a wonderful Shell X100 pourer. Here's a couple of batteries for you. <laughs> Thank you. Spare batteries. All right, do you want to put those I away? I do love this pourer. That will clean up really nice, won't it? That will. It's a real Bobby Dazzler. I do like that. Well, it is lovely, that, isn't it? Yeah. Really nice condition. Right, well, I think now we'll start the full walk around of this absolutely packed classic car. So you can see this main avenue, avenue. still a little bit muddy, but hopefully people are all right. We've got this absolutely incredible Rolls Royce here, handy information sheet for this one. It is a Silver Wraith Empress Touring Limousine, ordered new by DM King of Stevenage. 4.8 litre engine in this one, 1954. What an incredible car this is. Oh, I'm going to get a look at the interior. Wow, proper limousine. This is the car, sort of car to be driven in, not to be driven. Got some amazing decanters, those. What an incredible car. Beautiful quality. Yeah, stunning car. Thank you for the quick look inside. 1958 Rolls Royce Silver Wraith. Absolutely beautiful car. I wouldn't mind her riding one of those. Now, this, I believe, is an Austin 12, is it? An Austin 12 4, the Clifton, yeah. As you can see, slightly different colour of all these bits. Now you usually expect these to be chrome, although on these cars these are nickel plated. You can see some photos of it as found, owned for 31, oh, oh it was in 31 years in a barn. But yeah, super, super cool car. Probably quite a torquey engine. Quite a large capacity force in there in these. You know, they're not, they're not very quick, but they're quite torquey. You just pop it in top gear and you just leave it there for most of your journey. They are quite fun to drive these old things and I do like the look of these great, great pre-war cars. This is a pairing often seen together on a lot of the classic cars as we go to. Got the Morris J-Type van here. This is a 1957 car with this very, very still dog. Trust me, it is a real dog. Let's see if we can get his attention. There he goes on the move now. Trust me, look, it is a real dog. Just a very, very calm one. In the Morris type J type van, seen this one plenty of times before. It's a beautiful van. It's been on the show scene for so so long. Dad remembers taking photos of this in the 90s and stuff, I think. 
Very cool Morris Mine 1000 Traveller, quite an early one in being in the pre 60s section. Superb wood, this has quite clearly been restored. I want to say the wood is super, super crisp. It's often a weak point on these Morris Minor Travellers. Probably the English answer to the American Station Wagon. Yeah, it's definitely one of the slightly earlier cars. Great colour as well. I do like the colour of this one. The central speedometer in these Morris Miners. This is have the A Series engine up front in these. That's an immaculate car. Really, really pretty little car as well. Just behind it are a load of other A Series engine cars. Just beyond the Moggy Traveller is a wonderful little Fiat 500. I'm surprised this is in the pre 60s section. I would have thought this would be sort of late 60s, early 70s. 500L Elridge. I'm sure that's not pre 60s, but we'll forgive it. We've got this wonderful Chevy Corvette Series 1 as well. It's been a long time since I've seen this car, but it does pretty much get everywhere. About 280 brake horsepower in these V8s. Three speed manual gearbox. A uh, four speed, sorry, manual gearbox. Four on the floor in these. These probably were available as an automatic as well, but the manual, of course, offers the better driving experience. A 290 brake horsepower, actually, a 4.6 litre small block engine. There you go for America, a 4.6 is a small engine. 0 to 60 in 7.7 seconds. Still a pretty serious car. This is incredible. This this is a bit of pre war goodness again. This is, well, it might be actually, is this 40s? Hmm, certainly pre-war design. This is an uh, incredible Cadillac LaSalle, oh yeah, 1940 from Ohio. Just look at that front, absolutely gorgeous. It's been a long time, it's been too long since I've seen one of these 30s and 40s American cars because they're just incredible cars, aren't they? Look at that interior. Column shift, probably a three-speed, I'd imagine. I believe these have a straight eight up front in them, which is super, super cool. Such a great view over the bonnet, I'm sure, in these. Such a gorgeous, gorgeous car. Super quiet engine as well. Powerful, but very, very quiet and just beautiful. Lovely white wall tyres, left hand drive, lots of space in the back, plenty fast enough for British roads. Just absolutely gorgeous chrome. Really love that car. Beyond a couple of moderns, we've got some 50s competitors. Now this is not an A35, which was one of the main competitors to the Standard 10. And interestingly, these two cars, while they are very, very different cars, this has got the A-Series engine and this has got the Standard SC 4-cylinder engine. This one has a 948cc engine and this one has exactly the same, a 948cc engine. Different engines, but happen to be exactly the same size which is very, very strange, and the interesting thing is the Austin A30 that predated these had an 803, as did the Standard 8 that predated the Standard 10, which was also an 803cc, so intertwined engine capacities with these Austins. These were both obviously competitors for the British economy saloon market. It's great to see two of these Standard 10s here, this one in blue. It's absolutely incredible, it's in mint condition, a bit nicer than ours. Of course, it's got the bigger engine than ours, ours being an 8. From 56. Not exactly sure what year this car is. But very, very cool. Nice separate lettering on the number plates. And you can see this is maybe a bit of an earlier car, a slightly lower spec car with the simpler grill at the front. This is yet another standard 10. This one is from 58. This one is from somewhere. I'm going to guess 57 for this standard 10. Bit more of an original car, this one, perhaps an older resto, usable. I like his little parking light, he's got the Y Pack parking light there, a bit of a period accessory. I do like that. More period accessories, got the Shropshire Star and the lovely old radio. But yeah, these parking lights, more people need to put parking lights on their classic cars. Great period accessory. These mirrors maybe look a little bit different to ours, but hmm, not exactly sure. Just beyond that is this wonderful Citroen, Citroen Traction Avant. These were sold in Britain and France. This is an original French built car. They were sold in Britain in Slough, or built in Slough. But being left hand drive, this is an original French car. Traction owner, Owners Club badge. Yeah, I wonder what these are like being front wheel driving a very advanced car for their time, these were. And I would be interested to see what these drive like, because I bet actually they do drive quite smoothly. A great little lineup here of economy saloons. So many beautiful classic British cars here today. The theme continues with the super, super original Austin A40 Somerset. Dad's had a bit of an interesting history with these regarding breaking down on roundabouts and things. 
we got a Boots Antifreeze sticker there. That's a great another period accessory. I bet that's been there since the 50s. Column shift change gearbox, semaphore indicators. Super original little car, you know. In that condition, you're not going to be afraid to use it, which is great, because you bring it out on days like these. Not the song, if anyone knows the song at the start of the Italian job. Whoa, what's going on there? Right, Austin A40 Farina. Mark 1, one of the first Farina designed cars from BMC. Sort of moving away from the curvy curviness of these Austins, the 50s Austins, into the sharp lines of the Farina designed Austins in the 60s. This is quite an early car because many of these were known as the Countrymen's, which had all of the sort of boots lifting up like that, but this is one of the earlier cars like our own A40 Series 1, which is, has the boot like this. This is exactly the same colour as our Austin A40. This one is quite a bit nicer, one could say. Bit annoying with that there, but hopefully you can still hear me. But yeah, I think Dad really, really liked the look of this, and I'm sure he would love to have a car like this one day. We've got these lovely spot lamps. I can't remember what brand those lamps were. Were they Y-Pack or something? Super cool little lamps. It's a gorgeous little car. I do like the look of Austin A40 Farinas. And he's got the little Corky model of those. That's an old Corky model. And we've actually got one of those at home as well. Wow, what is that? A Unimog Mercedes van. How cool is that? Wow, really early Unimog. Uh, you're going to what an incredible shape enjoy. that is, gorgeous That's shape. The event of this season. Wow, that is really. Uh, it probably predates the Unimogs actually, but that is super cool. Twin wheels on the back, now, I love the, the look uh, of that. Of the, uh, what an incredible old van that is, gorgeous, um, gorgeous van. Round, Lovely really shape. And That's a wonderful van, van. I really it's like that. Similar colour to the A40. Uh, the that really is so something to behold. A uh, bit more BMC format. goodness here. This is a Austin A30, this one here, um, having the chrome grill and the smaller rear windows. This has got the 803 CCA series in it. And this has got the 1098 A series in it, being a Moggy 1000. And this is another Austin A3rd, it's just got a modified grille I think, so it also has the 803cc engine in it. And now this is an interesting one, this Morris Minor, which I think is a Morris Minor Series 2 body on a modern chassis because as soon as you look inside, we've got a modern, fully modern interior, so I think this is just the chassis of a Series 2 Morris Minor. It would have been quite a rare car with its earlier style of, of the front grille as opposed to the style of the front grille on those ones. Bit of a strange wide body, I'm not exactly sure about this car. Now it's only a two-seater as the seats are mounted very far back in the car. Nice original reg plates, at least on the back, but not much else is original on this one. Can't quite figure out what it's based on, a five-speed manual gearbox. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure, but a Morris Minor sort of, yeah, Morris Minor shell on a modern modern drivetrain, which is it's an interesting one. Personally, I would not do that, but yeah, interesting one, that one. The Morina, just behind here, don't think that's pre-60s, is a wonderful Sunbeam Talbot Tora, Sunbeam Talbot 10, this one, probably just post-war, late 40s, I guess. Pretty much pre-war design, you know, still pre-war technology before sort of 48 when the likes of the Austin A40 Devon came along with new technology. These are super cool cars. Still with the cars is here, a lot of the wood element going on. We've got some beautiful wood framing all the windscreen. Gorgeous car. Bakelite dashboard as well. Do love these sunbeams. Sunbeam Talbot. Is this your car, sir? We're getting a quick look under the bonnet. So is that a side valve four? So is this a some but some beam sort of top at ten? Is this car? And what year is this one? This is a forty-six. Oh right, so just just post-war. Yeah. But it's a bit of a sort of pre-war design, isn't it? Oh right, yes. So because weren't some some beam tall, but it's pre-war. Were they not manufactured yeah, yeah, pre-war or something? They were. Yeah, yeah I thought they were. So how long have you had this one? Uh, since 1985. Oh, well. Wow. That's quite an ownership then, isn't it? Yeah. This one cost about, this cost 50 pence when I bought it. Really? <laughs> From a friend. 
the original owner. Wow. Did it require a bit of work to get it to this standard? Yes, yeah, so I had to do some of the ash frame. Um, no, of course, yeah. Yes. Totally original apart from that, which is unusual for a car of this age. It is unusual, yeah. Um, so you did a bit of the work yourself? Yes, yeah. Painted it like, I painted it, um, it's been done twice. Oh, one right. was done professionally, and the second one I did myself in, in the home. Oh, right, yeah. Um, Very cool. I had to rebuild the engine again. Uh, this is the original engine, uh, original block. The cylinder head I had fitted this year from the club, because they don't last. Uh, yeah, I do love this era. Yeah, the aluminium was very bad because it was. Right. And they just corrode and the yeah. horse just goes through them. But yeah. the club had them redone, so this is a new cylinder head on it. Oh, very cool. Of course, we've got the uh, twin sort of tone, the high and low horns as well. Yeah, we've got a Ford V8 Pilot at home, which has got the high and low. It's a good horn sound, isn't it? Yeah. I do love this era of it's car. It's modern, I mean, it'll do. 65. Um, um, and then we'll move to the year catch up. It technically could do 75. Really? Four, <laughs> um, which is quite <laughs> quick. That is quite year, quick, yeah. Side valve. Yeah. So but that's um, because of the. We start the head was designed by Roche, who got the horsepower went up from 40 to 40, so 30 to 42 horsepower. So it's got a bit of a, so a bit of a sporty head on it, is this one? It was a sports head. Oh right, to make the cars go a bit quicker. Yeah, I mean an extra five brake horsepower in any old car is going to be pretty noticeable. This one, I think I dynoed at 44. Oh, right. the block. That's all you need though, isn't it? Rolling along, what, 40, 45? Uh, 45, 50 is about, about right. Yeah. Yeah, that's all you need really from a car like this. Nice and simple. Nothing should break on it. But have a successful show. But no, I've had a long time. I just can't. Have you got any other cars? Any old yes, cars? I've got a Jaguar 3.8 Mark II. Oh, very nice. I've, um, just modified. Uh, but I didn't want to bring it today because it's not quite right yet. So I'm still working on it. And it's a bit boggy today, which might be interesting in something like a Mark II Jag. <laughs> The queue getting in for was a bit of a challenge, with oh, yeah. heating on those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, this is a superb little car. I really love the look of this Sunbeam Talbot. Yeah. Thank you for the look around the engine. Yeah, fine. Next up is this wonderful Simca Arond. Now this is a fascinating little car. A little French car, left hand drive. I'm afraid I don't know much about these. You've got a huge Chevy, is it a day van those are known as, I think. If get bubbling away now, he might have a bit of trouble going up there later on. Well, let's have a closer look at this. This looks like it's in super original condition, actually. Such a rare little car. Simcoe Ron, beautiful domed glass around the front and around the back. What a beautiful shape that is. Really love the look at these. These wing mirrors are incredible as well. Look at those. What a gorgeous car. Column shift. Such a pretty shape. I really love the look of that. One of the rarest cars here. Fifties, probably. Interestingly, it's got the British sort of spec Lucas P700 lamps on it. That's the sort of thing you see on MGBs and stuff. Would have thought it would have had some Marshall lamps or something on it, but no. Lucas P700s. But if anyone knows anything more about any of these gorgeous Simca Aron coupes, then please let me know in the comments or any of the cars here, such as that wonderful Sunbeam Talbot over there. I do like that. But yeah, what an interesting little car, what a gorgeous colour. That's a racing Jaguar XJS V12, I bet that sounds quite incredible, but might struggle a little bit with the grass up there. Another Series 3 Land Rover, this one's a long wheelbase example. Diesel powered. Let's have a look at the B section for the 1960s. We've got this wonderful Mark 1 console Cortina, Lotus Cortina, that we've seen many, many times before at pretty much every show we go to. It's great to see it out again. Here's a great little Vauxhall Viva HA. Slightly later economy, so probably 60s D Reg, so what's that? 67, 68, somewhere around there. Very cool little car. Here's a Jensen CV8. This is a proper bit of kit. It's been a while since I've seen this car. It comes to all the major shows, but not a lot of the little ones we go to over the winter period. 
I keep saying it, but it's so great to be back at these shows. I do love making these videos. This is just stunning, isn't it? Chrysler, I think, V8 up front in these. Three-speed automatic. Just a, what an incredible spaceship of a car. Some people don't like the look of these cars, but I think they look fantastic. Just a stunning, stunning car. Sea Reg 66 or something, somewhere around there. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous car. I really love the look of these. Especially this one. This is just exactly how I'd have one. Although, actually, it would be quite cool to have one with scruffy paint and a huge, loud exhaust, but this is still a lovely, lovely car. Next up is a Triumph Herald. This is a 1360 car. Thirteen sixty referencing its thirteen hundred engine and sixty brake horsepower, as opposed to the twelve fifty, twelve hundred fifty brake horsepower, which is the earlier design of the Triumph Herald. Very cool, great looking Volvo P eighteen hundred here. I do like the look of these. I do love the look of the chrome along the side of these. Gorgeous, gorgeous cars. These ah, now this is an interesting one. I remember this because this one has got some incredible rear lights. These are sort of like Ford Thunderbird type rear lights, and I've never seen them on another one, so I don't know if it's modified or if it's like a super rare variant. But yeah, these are like the old Ford Thunderbird lights on the back of this P800. It's a really good looking car. Lovely interiors in these as well. But yeah, those rear lights. Fascinating, really, yeah. Fort Anglia Deluxe, bit of a sporty up one here. Just the two seats in this one. Escort Mexico Mark 1. This one's got four seats. And a fantastic looking, what is this? A, a, oh, it's a Vauxhall Victor Estate, this one, a, a Super. I'm afraid I can't exactly... I can't exactly remember... <laughs> Can't exactly. Is it the F? What was it? The FB? FA? Oh no, it isn't. No, that's the later one, isn't it? I can't remember the gen. F A F A Victor. Yeah, because the FB is the later one. Yeah. Wonderful car. I do like the look of that. I believe I did an interview with this car a year or so ago. Probably here, I reckon. I'll have to trawl back into the archive for my videos. I do really like the look of that. Practical Estates. Yeah, I'll have to trawl through my uh, backlog of videos. It's a gorgeous car, I really do love that. Moving on, we have a Sunbeam Rapier, Series 111A. Bit of Roots Group goodness here, it's a 1600cc engine in this one. Gorgeous car, I really do love the look of the Sunbeam Rapiers. Roots Group did make some gorgeous cars. The Sunbeam Rapier, probably one of the best looking in my opinion. Two door hardtop coupe, four speed. First registered March the 1st in 63. Yeah, gorgeous car. Really do love the look of that. Triumph Herald, now this is a 1250, so a 1200 cc engine, making 50 brake horsepower. Of course, many Triumph fanatics will know that this basic engine came from the development of the standard engine, the standard SC engine, of course, standard Triumph linked, the standard SC engine, the 803 and 948 units were enlarged for the likes of the Herald, which gave it as a 1200 in this car and the 1300 in the 1360, the later one. So yeah, many links between standard of Triumph, of course. Lovely Worsley Hornet Mark III for sale, this car is. Good guidebook in the back there. BMC sticker. I do like the Walsley Hornets. Probably my favourite variant of the Little Minis, although I do like the Riley Elfs as well. 1968 this car is from. Very cute little car there. Now let's have a close look at this Mercedes van. Now I think this sort of thing predates the likes of the Unimog. It's got the Unimog type front on it. But I think it's actually earlier than the Unimog. e -Reg, what is that? 70s? I think that's 70s by now. Yeah, it's an interesting one that, just peeking through, we've got a great looking Triumph Spitfire, now this will have the same basic engine as this here, the Herald 1360, this is a Mark III Spitfire with the raised bumper, the same as the Mark II GT6, it's probably got a 1200 or 1300 engine in it, very cool with the little hardtop, I do love the look of the Mark III, it's probably my favourite of all the marks of the Triumph Spitfire, getting round now as well, here's the 1360 Herald, seen this one before I believe at the Combermere, you can tell people have been coming through a boggy field. And here's this wonderful original Morris Minor 1000. The wood on this looks like it is factory original wood. Just 
mellowed beautifully. That's the way to describe this car. Beautiful patina. Looks to me like original paint, or at least a very, very old resto or old paint job. That's a cool little car that I do like that. Here's the second of two Austin A40 Farinas and yet another Mark 1. You occasionally see a Mark 2, I know there was a Mark 2 at the Tour Cheshire Historic Rally, but no, Mark 1 Austin A40 Farina. Rare beast indeed. This one's in a very nice green, complete with the matching green interior. Capri has gate crashed the 60s section, I'm not sure that's from the 60s. What I'm sure is, is this four door Cortina GT. And a pairing of 1600E Mark II Cortinas here, one white, one red. Triumph 1300, no, not a Dolomite or a Toledo, this is the 1300, the front wheel drive ones. Now this is probably has a similar engine to the likes of the Spitfire and the Herald being a 1300. Ford Anglia Super, great liver on this one, really do love the look of that, it epitomises the sort of two-tone 60s vibe, isn't it really? Great looking car these. As a Range Rover rolls past, we've got a lo another lovely Morris Minor 1000. Got his uh, Traveller sticker there as well. He's a great practical classic, I do really like the Travellers. Bit of an Alpina modified Z3, that's got a 3.4 straight 6 in that one. Alpina rims on it as well. He might have some traction issues up there. I'm not sure if people are still getting stuck up there or not. I'm sure they are because it's pretty muddy and getting pretty churned up. And of course this is a two day event so he'll be even churned up for the people who come tomorrow and I believe it's raining tomorrow so we pick the day as has that Triumph Dolomite Sprint over there, Mercedes SL. I'm going to have to start speeding up or this video, it's going to be like two hours long. Although you guys seem to like that sometimes. Series 2, Jaguar XJ in blue, very very nice. Probably a 4.2 straight 6 in this one. Or an XJ6L now, is that a 4.2? I think it is. This is a Series 1 Daimler Sovereign. Same as the Series 1 Jaguar, just a slightly higher spec. And this has got a 4.2. The Series 1s were available as a 2.8. The 2.8 straight 6 was probably a little bit small. And then the 4.2, still using the basic sort of iteration of the XK engine that was used in the likes of the XK120s and the E-types and stuff, just enlarged for these. Four-speed manual, quite rare. Especially in the Daimler, they'd usually be automatic. I mean, sort of more upmarket variant of the Jag. Here's the little Morris 1100 we saw coming in earlier. Lovely Ford Cortina Super. This car looks super. Why did I just say super, super? This car looks fantastic. Let's go with that. Two door GT. Not oh, GT, sorry. Oh, we've even got a Mini having some traction issues. I haven't seen that yet today. He's made it through though. But this is just a really nice little car. Time warp looks to be restored. It's just in wonderful condition. It's just like new. It's exactly how it would have looked in the showroom. It's just such a glorious little car. I love the look of these. Yeah, just really pretty little car. I do like the look of those Cortinas. Here's a bit of a sporty one. It's a four-door. A sporty Cortina complete with Solex. Oh, is that, is that's a Weber car, but actually single Weber on that four-cylinder engine. Once again, amazing condition. This one's on the Ross style or Ross style wheels. MGB GT on wires here. G Reg. It's got the earlier style of gear knob, which I do like. Nice painted wires. These cars do look probably the best on the painted wires. Nice chrome bumper as well. Plenty of those here today, but probably one of the best colours to have one of those in. 1969. So actually quite an early car there. An E30 BMW. Good looking cars these. BMW 4 cylinder in these, it's like the M20 or something, I'm not exactly sure of the engine code, but these are definitely going to be future classics, and this one looks super, super sharp and blue. Lovely Sunbeam Alpine Roadster, 1725 in that one, quite a large, one of the larger engines in there. Mark 1 Ford Transit Camper, wow, this is a real time warp in a great condition as well. Really rare old camper van here. That's cool, that, isn't it? Yeah. I'm sure Dad will quite like that one. There's a Ford Control Land Rover, is it the 103 series or something? My car knowledge is so rusty. 
Series 3 Land Rover D Reg. Bit of a mini section now. We've got this mini van. Now, the mini van just didn't change much over the sort of course of the mini because it was made for what 30 years, 40 years, or something. But this is actually quite a late one. We've got the British Leyland badge. So, this is probably actually later than you think, probably 1980s. But it doesn't look it, does it? It looks sort of 60s. MG Midget, there's the lovely Sunbeam. That's a good looking car, that nice early one. Here's a bit of a rally prepared Mini Clubman. Four Lucas lamps on the front. Twin Webbers they look to be. Matched up to that E-Series engine. It even appeared on cars and car conversions. We've got one of those stickers on the Standard 8. Here's another Mark II Cortina. Citroen 2CV. <coughs> bit of a muddy Triumph Stag in that great Triumph 70s purple. That's a brilliant colour. I do love those. On the likes of the TR6s and more. There are the little midgets. It's a good looking little car, I like the colour. Reliant Scimitar GTE, this is a SE6A I think in this one. A Mark II Cortina, Mex not Cortina, sorry, Mark II Escort Mexico. And here's the Triumph Dolomite Sprint. That bonnet doesn't shut very well. Very shiny MGB GT there. A Triumph Stag in white, haven't seen a white one yet today. Rover SD1, this is quite a rare car actually being a four cylinder one. Usually see the likes of the six cylinders and the V8s and these which are more common. Rover 2000, seen a lot of these cars on the way in. You've got the brown Triumph Stag with the very cool hard top. Austin Healy Sprite, these have got an A series as well. Some of these have the 1275, which is quite a desirable little engine. Twin SU carbs on that one. Ford Capri Mark 1, quite an early one to have the 3 litre V6 in it, big engine in there, 3000 GXL this model, that's cool that isn't it, quite an early car to have that huge V6, good looking car there, here's a similarly good looking silver Capri, probably prefer the rounded headlights on the other one, that's just me being picky, though I do like the wide tyres on this one, the wide mini light rims, this is rare one, a Ford Cortina Estate. I believe it's like, what am I about Estate? Sorry, Ford Cortina Pickup, that's the one. Mark three, I think Cortina this one, I think it was a um, South African import, if I remember correctly, P100 or something they're called. Very rare car indeed. There's a Cortina 2.3 gear. Mark three Cortina GXL there in green. One of the highest spec cars. Here's the Tickford Capri, a Porsche Cayman, an Escort Mark II 1600 Sport, a Triumph 2500S. This sounded really, really tasty on the way in. This is the same basic engine as the standard in a way, if you think about it, because the standard was enlarged to the likes of the sort of 1500s, and then they had bolted on an extra couple of cylinders for these two litres, the Triumph 2000, and the two and a half litre for the Triumph 2.5 Pi. A great sounding engine. Now this is a gorgeous little car, this is a wonderful Alfa Romeo Spider, but a really really early car, I think they're called the boat tail ones, these early cars, just look at the back of this, absolutely gorgeous little car, really love the look of that, such a gorgeous little car, there's a drone flying around up there. Let's get a look at the interior, wow this is one of the cars I'd have today, it's got to be a highlight for the show for me. Look at that interior, this is just an achingly beautiful car, lovely sort of glass covers over the headlamps, we always love glass covers don't we, or plastic or whatever they are, gorgeous little Alfa Romeo grille up front, mustn't need much cooling these engines because there's not a lot of, of air that's going to be intaked through there, just a beautiful car, beautiful beautiful car, that's one of my favourites, looks like we've got a van that's getting a bit stuck there, as the Triumph TR6 rolls past. We are having a few casualties today, aren't we? And I believe, is that one of those little 2CV based specials? Sounds like a 2CV. Don't stop, you might not be able to get going again. No, it's all right, 2CV has relatively narrow tires. Another X300 or X308 Jaguar. He might struggle a bit when he gets up there and working my way up. XJ Sport, that van is still struggling a little bit 
Oh, it is a bit boggy now, isn't it? Look at this lovely Porsche 911 Targa. Don't stop, although being rear engine, he's got the weight over the wheels, it might help a bit. That's a gorgeous car, that really nice looking 911 Targa. Sliding back. And a Rover P6, quite an early one, turning in over there, as does the 911. Somehow I managed to miss this wonderful pair. We've got a Volvo P800 E. Hey, see this is the usual light you see on the back as opposed to the Ford Thunderbird type lights on that other one we saw earlier. We've got a wonderful Mercedes 300 SEL. This is like the W108 to the W109 shape. Super smooth saloon. Dad was actually considering a smaller engine variant of these but decided to go with the Pilot instead. Column change, probably an automatic I'd imagine. Absolutely bulletproof engine. Mercedes was unrivaled in terms of like reliability at this time. These things we got for millions of miles and have done. Yeah, these are beautiful looking cars. I do like the look at great looking sort of sharp, sharp saloon lines. You know, very very cool. Is that an Escort 1300 XL? That model is automatic. That's a bit of a rarity then, if it is. An automatic car just behind me is a Mark III Cortina as well. Got a Bedford CF camper as well, 1972 a Bedouin camper, original one as well. Quite a rare car there. That is cool. I like that. This is this is a Volvo 144, I think. Granddad used to have one of these when Dad was little. I think it is a Volvo 144. Doesn't say on the back, but I'm pretty sure it is. A lot of these get rallied, but this one is completely unmodified, which is probably quite rare. And then you add the 164, which is the large one, the six under one, which we did have for a bit. And then this is the 144, the smaller one. And another very, very cool Capri. The VW Camper, Triumph Dolomite. Very cool Granada, I do like that colour. And this great Saab 96. I believe this car is quite a local car to Grandad. Absolutely immaculate condition. And yes, look at that fella there. This is a turbocharged Saab 96. Original V4 engine, but with that guy there. Turbocharger. Very, very cool. A bit of modifying on this Saab 96. A bit more modified cars. A Volkswagen Beetle gang here. Quite a few of these, eh? And wow, a Marina camper van. How rare is this? I wonder if this is some sort of period conversion kit or if it's actually sold like this. I'm not sure. It's not my speciality sort of camper vans and caravans. Very original, looks completely unrestored. But that's a really rare variant. And you could probably actually stand up in there, which is quite handy, in quite a low roof car like this Morris Marina. Now, what is this? We've got some form of insanely rare Mitsubishi. Never seen one of these before. But what model is it? We'll have to have a look around the back. Seems to be a sporty one. It's got turbo decals all over it. Ah, a Mitsubishi Cordia, I'm afraid. I've never heard one of those. One of the cars that time forgot, probably. But a Cordia Turbo. I bet this is one of the rarest cars here. Probably unrestored as well. It does look in really, really nice condition. And those decals, you know, this is going to be a desirable little car. Very, very rare. I can't imagine how many of these that are still around. That's an incredibly rare little car. I think this is like the 70s, the 80s section. This is probably an 80s car. We've got a few Jaguar V12s over there, XJSs, a few Golfs, a very cool W123 shaped Mercedes, that Lancia Delta HF. Is this an early Jetta VW? I think it is. Of course, we will be focusing on the older cars today. So we've got some Golf, an Escort, that BMW, which is seen quite a few times, MR2 Mark I. There's the HF Lancia Delta, very cool, the Opel Astra, and it's actually a diesel in this W123, a 2.4 litre diesel, probably still quite reliable. I'd prefer to have a straight six or something, manual gearbox. Good looking cars these, I think a lot of them went to South Africa. This one might even be a South African import, you never know. Mercedes SL, and the Land Rover, Ford Granada. There's a lot of Ford Granadas here. Is that a Fiat C Cento there? A Cinquecento, sorry. And a Red Oil Point GTA, 2.5 litre V6, turbocharged in this one. These are good looking cars, these. Very advanced for their time. Series 3 XJ Jaguar, 
an anniversary edition Mini, probably 30 years of the Mini, I think that one is. Reliant SS1, or Simit actually, sorry, SS1. Very rare little sports car, the small sports one. These are rare little cars as well. Little Escort. Let's have a look through. Oh, we've got a lovely Alpina C1, I think that is. A couple of, well, it's a Range Rover and a Land Rover. 2CV, but this is very, very cool. It's a 3 Series, I think. BMW Alpina car. This is super cool. A C1 2.3. I've seen this car before, but not for a while. There's these bigger shows, the bigger classic car shows, the classic shows events starting up again. You do see these cars starting to come out again. This is a lovely, lovely car. Smaller than the likes of a 5 Series 3 litre or something, being a 3 Series, but all done up in the wonderful Alpina gear, Alpina gear knob, steering wheel, wheels, Alpina tuned engine. Superb little car. I do love the look of the shark nose, BMW's really great looking car. Just beyond that is a race prepared XJS Jaguar. This looks like an interesting one, I believe it would have been originally a 5.3 V12, I think in these. It's a natural roll cage and stuff, so it is a natural race car. There is a championship, which I do mean to see one day, which is all sort of XJs, the X300s and the XJSs, which must make a fantastic sound. It looks like this one may have had some traction issues, or at least some understeer issues or something at the front. That's a good looking car, that, in the retro TWR livery. Escort Eclipse, rare variant, an Opel Monza. Another rare car there, quite a nice little Mini as well, roll gauge in that one as well. Ford Sierra Sapphire, an Escort, and a Ford Orion, the Orion to keep no less. Mini, and oh what were these, it's a little Nissan Pow or something isn't it? I think it is, something like that, a Nissan Pow or something, something like that. Or is it no Nissan S car go? That's what it is. Very rare little van, automatic gearbox. I think micro based, I think they are. Oh wow, what is that? A beautiful old Humber getting towed by a Jeep. I wonder what's happened there. The Jeep is cool in itself. I want to have a look at the Humber. Let's have a look over here. So we've got a wonderful wartime Jeep. And then this gorgeous Humber, which apparently seems to have some running issues or something. I wonder what's going on here. I do love the look of this Jeep. This Humber, if I'm going to be honest, I do disapprove of the LED lights on this Humber, but apart from that, it looks like a relatively original car, which is very, very cool. Big four-seater tour, like a 2025 or something like that. It is running, though. I wonder what's going on. Maybe a bit stuck. It's got quite thin tyres, so yeah. I'm sure this Jeep will be coming in handy today on this field. This is the Fiat Cinquecento here. And a Jaguar XJ with engine on show. Got the Vauxhall Tigra. That's a rare car in itself. Nice little Mini there. Here's the engine on the Jag. Looks to be a straight six to me. 3.2 litre straight six in these. There's Mercedes a -Series over there. Those are getting rarer now. Vauxhall Corsa, probably still quite an affordable first car. Here's the Vauxhall Tigra, 1.4. These are rare little beasts, these are. This is the Mini as well, Mario registration on this Mini. Another little Vauxhall Corsa. Ford Capri, Ford Sierra there. And the Jeep and the Humber. Very smart looking BMW 5 Series here. There's a Riley Elf just back there. One of the Mini variants, as I said. And a Harvest Gold MG Roadster. A Cavalier GLS and a Another Cavalier GLS, Nissan Figaro, Peugeot 205 Rally, that's quite a cool little car that, it's great livery on that. Peugeot Talbot Sport original sticker in the back, very very cool, complete with Peugeot Talbot Sport hat. Pairing of MX-5s here, we're in the little yellow one just over there today, we've got a Mark II MX-5 here, or 2.5, I'm not exactly sure the difference I'm afraid. With quite a wide spoiler on the back of that one, a few more modern classics, quite rare, some rare cars in here. Of course, we are focusing on the old ones today. We've got a V6 engine, Rover 75, which was once having some traction issues being front wheel drive. Looks like everyone's made it in relatively well so far. So, this is the Mark II MX5. Just beyond that is a Mark I MX5, where it looks to be actually perhaps a UNOS having the Squire import reg. 
basically the same car, just slightly different interior and different shape of bridge. Quite wide tyres on the back of this one. These cars are great little cars to drive and quite easy to modify, loads of parts everywhere. Nice side mounted red as well, I do like side mounted registrations. Mercedes SL, R32 Golf, another Range Rover. Metro, this is the British Leyland section, there's the Montego I saw earlier. Metro and a Maestro. There's a Peugeot 205 GTI, so much happening here at Western Park today. And is this a... Hmm, I'm not exactly sure what this is, is it a Marina? Or is it Morris Ah Town? No, it is a Marina, isn't it? A 1300HL Marina. Just a bit of an interesting vinyl roof on this car, which I have not seen before on these. Yeah, vinyl roof Morris Marina, what a time warp. Maestro, this is the original police car. I did do an interview with the owner of this one at the Crew Heritage Car Meet with its A plus series engine, so please do check that video out. And another Montego, this one a saloon. Moving over to the club section now, I've got a bit of a Jaguar section and someone with a very, very old camera taking photos of his old cars. I rate that, that probably have to stay standing there for quite a while, but yeah, old looking photos of these cars as well. So here's the Triumph Roadster, saw these on the way in so I won't spend too long on them, very grand front. Here's the Lanchester we saw earlier, here's a Jensen Interceptor, this is the FF, the Ferguson 4, the four wheel drive system, very rare car. 110 of this model produced, there you go, very rare car indeed. Lotus Elan Plus 2. Riley RM, I think that's a one and a half litre engine car. Lovely MG Magnet, sports saloon in my opinion. Looking very, very cool in black. Here's the Fiat 600. It's a bit of an interesting Ford now, I wasn't exactly sure. I think it's a Granada, but it's just like a, a slightly later Granada or a base spec Granada. I haven't seen one like this. Still a 2.8 V6, but the front of it just looks a little bit different to most of them. In this club here, Moggy Mine 1000. Ford Mondeo, I think that one is. A little Austin Cooper S Mini, that's quite a cool little car. A brown Austin Allegro. Vauxhall Nova. Nice Cortina, four door Mark 1. 991, I think that is Porsche. Ford Focus ST, a Granada, and a Golf on the end. There's just never ending classic cars here at the Western Park Motor Show, I think it's actually called. So we've got this 1939 Rover. Is this a P3 or a P2? I want to say that's the P2 with a slightly narrower grille, I think. So I think this is a P3. This is a Rover 16, so this will be one of the six cylinder powered cars. Beautiful six cylinder will be under there. Nice, I think Lucas, those are lamps. A couple of Lucas spot lamps, as you know, one spot lamp and the lovely Lucas horn. Drop head coupe, this one. Yes, yeah, two and a half litre straight six in this one would have been £428 new. It's a great looking car, that. Do like these old Rovers. Here's a similar one, this is a 75, so probably still another six on the car, but I want to have a look at this. This is. Yeah, I absolutely love this. This is a Rover 10, so it's probably still a six-cylinder. This is the Rover Sports Register Club. That's a fantastic looking car, 1934. Might even be a P1, this. It's either a P2 or a P1. This is really, really lovely. We've got a pair of rear hinged doors. Usually you just see the front ones to be rear hinged or just the rear ones, but no. Two rear hinged suicide doors, so they open them that way. That's a lovely car, I really like that. Lovely livery in the blue and black two-tone, gorgeous interior. That would be a really lovely car to drive. Super, super quiet, nice engine. That just looks gorgeous, I love the look of that. More modern, this is a Rover 75 or MG equivalent estate. A Rover Peak 4, the early Cyclops car with the central light. 2.2, and it's a Rover P6, single carb in this one. A trio of Land Rovers and a 2.2 twin carb on the end. Over here is the West Midlands All Sorts Club. This is a Daimler Conquest, a Conquest Century. Very cool car, very majestic. Ford Fiesta, that one is. Cavalier convertible. A huge Audi S7, it's amazing how <laughs> this is parked right next to an Austin A35. Absolutely massive Audi and tiny Austin A35. Blue MGB Roadster, 
blue Nissan Micra getting rare now and another Vauxhall Tigra I thought it was just one but two pretty much identical cars and a Mark III Fiesta on the end here so many clubs here today this is a wonderful Vauxhall is it a Firenze SL2000 I'm not a, oh, it's a Vauxhall Victor this one is good looking car that I think the coke bottle shaped rear window yeah, nice looking car that. This is a Nova special, you can see the crazy thing. I believe these are Beetle based. Crazy Nova sort of kit car type thing. Fiberglass body, I'm pretty sure. Interesting car. Focus. Another Mark II. Ford Escort, which is interesting because it has a Millington Racing Engines banner. Now, Millington make a lot of the sort of crazy, crazy fast, like sometimes like 350 brake horsepower race engines for the likes of the Mark II Ford Escort rally cars, which are pretty insane. So if this has got a Millington tuned engine, then there's a pretty serious bit of kit and it does look good. It does look really, really good, actually. Sort of nice and original inside, but modified, but modified nicely on the outside. Spot lamps, nice wheels. Do like that. Modern 1 Series BMW. Great looking XK Jaguar. Do like the look of that. A 4 litre V8 in that one. Jaguar XJ. Quite a rare Alfa Romeo in a very, very eye catching martini livery. Ford Focus Mark 1. They're meant to drive quite well, those are. Especially the RSs. 7 Series BMW for sale. Good looking cars, those I think. Saab Cabriolet. And the Jensen Healy. These are really rare little cars. Very forgotten as well. Not many people know about these great old Jensen Healy's. Just behind me, got a bit of a BMW section. Many, many BMWs. One of the oldest here being the 318i, the E30. And this, I believe, this is a 535i5 series we saw on the way in earlier. E36 compact. Interesting to see an original one of those, and a lot of those get modified and raced because the compacts, I believe, handle quite well. Got a Moggy Minor Traveller, a bit of a Morris Minor section here, the MMOC. Oh, we've got a Granada limousine that's got a bit stuck over there. Although it has got moving again. So, Moggy Minor pickup, Morris Minor Traveller, Mor Morris Minor van. We've got all the variants here. And a more modern Audi. I believe that is a TVR T350C. Yeah, now these are good looking little cars. The slightly smaller version I like to think of these than the TVR Cigaris. I believe it's got the TVRs at the Speed 6, straight 6 up front in these. I do really like the look of these T350Cs. Great looking cars. Do like that. And I think that's going to have to be where the Granada limousine stays because that is a very long car, very heavy, and not going to have a whole lot of traction. Ah, it seems to be moving all right there, fair enough. The TVR seems to get up here all right. We've got this wonderful, I think it's 1959, Cadillac here. Let's get a look at this incredible paint job on this one. Cadillac Coupe de Ville, automatic gearbox column change. It's an incredible car, just spaceship design. I love this. I really do like that. Such a great looking car. Here you can see how the field has bitten back at quite a few of the people who have been bringing their prized classic cars here today. Oh my god, this is bad. This is going to be even worse by when people start leaving. And it's Easter Sunday today, and so it's bank holiday tomorrow, and this show is on tomorrow as well. But I don't know how many people are going to come. Wow, what's happened here? Something big has got stuck here. I wonder what it was. Let's fire the tyre trucks are. They sort of fade away there. There's a lot of cars with very, very muddy tyres around here. A bit of an American section here as I step across these great chasms. Hope you guys are enjoying this video. I certainly am. One of the best shows to go to, the classic shows events. Pretty much any of them are pretty good. Would recommend. Right, so what's here? Capri, Capri, Camaro, a couple of Camaros. And this is that cool wide body Capri that we saw on the way in. Three litre V6 in this one. Yeah, I, like that. I really like that wide body actually. Let's get a look at that. The back as well, that's a good looking, that's nice actually, yeah. Nice pinstripe and a great looking wide body. That looks really sort of muscular and very, very cool. I like the look of that, I do. Quite an original looking Capri here. 
quite a not original looking Capri here. A few more Capris, there's a great sound of these. I'm starting to get the feeling I'm in a bit of a Capri club. Interesting little section up here. We have a Beetle on the end, a modern Mercedes, but I want to focus on this. And I'm sure you know, we do love a good standard. This one seems to have a dog in the driving seat. This is a st standard Vanguard estate. Uh, standard Vanguard Vignali, I think these are called. The actual estates, which are very good looking cars. I do like the look of these. Dog's very excitable, isn't he? This is a really cool car, proper practical classic. Dad used to have one of these. Very, very similar to this one, pretty much identical actually, I did really like it. Yeah, standard Vagnon Vignali Estate. Good looking cars those. Rover P5, 3.5 litre, this is the low roof line sports saloon car. Nice original registration, you can see with lots of Rovers until like the Rover 75, we got the much, much taller shape of registration plate as opposed to many of the other cars here today, you know. They've all got that standard shape, but all the Rovers have custom plates, which must cost a bit if you have to re replace one, which is nice that this one's got its original one from new. We do like originality here on Car Traction, or at least I do. So a very cool green sports saloon Rover P5. And just next to that is a Ford Escort van. These are quite rare now. These do seem to get modified a lot. This one does seem to be a little bit modified. It's got some sporty wheels. And a lot of the cars today are modified with a bit of mud on their wheels due to the field conditions today. A couple of little specials here. We've got a bit of a racing special here. I can't remember what these are now. I should know. Because these things do sort of come around Alton Park for quite a while. So it seems to have some sort of flappy paddle gearbox, but also a, some, some form of sequential gearbox or something like that. It's an interesting one, this one. Fury, that's it, Fury, a little racing car. And this, I believe, is one of the 2CV based little specials. I think it's 2CV based, isn't it? Yeah, the Citroen Specials Club, so this was once a 2CV in its life, and there's now a little special with Castrol in the steering wheel and Castrol below its number plate. That's some interesting promotion of motor oil. I just cannot get over how many beautiful classic cars there are here today. Nice Mini, nice MGB GT, Alfa Romeo Spider, Pin in Farina designed. And a Volkswagen Scirocco, there's so much I'm afraid I probably won't be able to feature it all, but I will do my best. This video is going to be a long one. Also, very rare is this Volkswagen Polo C. Saab 900 here, getting rare of course. There's a Volvo Coupe, reversing up to its 850R friend over there, exactly the same colour. They're quite a good pair, aren't they? Right, let's see what else we can find. A Golf here. Very much an eclectic mix. I know at these classic shows events they do try to categorise things by date a lot. I want to get out of the top here, but it's just pretty much everyone parks wherever they want, which is good to be honest. I like all the variety. A few golfs, a golf cabriolet, a pairing of GTIs, Marlin Roadster, Morgan, Volkswagen Golf, a Discovery, another Polo C, a Ferrari California. I'm surprised he got up here with those heavy thick tyres. So many of these Polo C's here today. Thought these were rare until I came here today. Pro Drive modified WRX, very cool Subaru there. An R33 Skyline Nissan. Knows this is a GTR. If it's GTR, it'd be four-wheel drive, which means you would get up here relatively easily. It's a bit of a crazy one, isn't it? It's the RB6 cylinder engine in these. I don't, I don't see any GTR badge, so it might just be like a GTS-T or something, which is the rear-wheel drive variant. Certainly very modified Nismo body kit on the front. Very cool. If it is rear-wheel drive, I'm surprised you got up here. Things are starting to dry out a little bit. Got a 6.3 Merc there. Huge V8 in those. Quite cool. I do like those. Very lovely Clio here. Wise words of advice. It always pays to get to these shows, especially when they have auto jumbos early as you can pick up those bargains, you know, that Sir Volton is very, very nice for £8, stuff like that, you know, and the Red X, pretty much everything that I bought was pretty sensibly priced, let's say. We've got about 3,000 little toy cars here for sale. Fair enough. I think I'll take that one in the middle there. A few 
few motorbikes here and a few push bikes. Suzuki 750, a little moped and a Yamaha. This one's one that I actually didn't have a little look around before. We've got a Shell Aviation Spirit can there, unfortunately repainted but still quite cool. Yeah, I didn't see this one earlier. We've got a very, very cool Snowdrift can over there. Now, that would have been a tempt if I hadn't spent up everything already. Great looking toy garage here as well. Yeah, I didn't see this stall earlier. I do like that snowdrift can. The snowdrift stuff is very rare. Yeah, if you'd like to see sort of coverage of auto jumbles and videos about the auto jumbles as well as the shows, please do let me know in the comments. This one's got a few nice, lovely old toys in it as well. I do love my old toy cars. I've got my bedroom full of those things. <laughs> Imagine spending money on something silly and dispensable. Disposable, I mean, like the ice cream served by this, not a Ford Transit, but a Ferrari Transit. This one is, so sorry, the Ferrari Transit, yeah. But why would you spend money on things like ice cream when you can buy a Felsen oil drum? Honestly, I don't understand. Some people got some car parts here, Fiesta Mark III. These are handy places, though. These are the places you need to come if you're looking for car parts, you know. Where else are you going to find... An Escort Mark IV estate, body panel, stuff like that. It's super handy, these places. This store is where I got a couple of things off. The Serval can still here. There's lots of people milling around today. It's got a wonderful setup here with a very, very nice Shell Pyramid can there. Unfortunately, that was a little bit out of my price range. Though I didn't see that Shell X100 can before. Though, sadly, that will not fit in the MX-5. Although, actually, once upon a time I bought a huge Silkaline Concorde can here and went home in the MX-5 with on my lap, which was worth it. So it is actually possible, you know. I do love a good auto jumble. I'm sorry if I'm waffling a bit. But I'm just enjoying myself at this wonderful classic car show with all sorts of automotive parts and memorabilia delights here at Western Park. Got some gorgeous signs on this stall. I love that North British Clincher tyres one. A few interesting bits and bobs here. I do love that Esso oil pourer. It's probably the sort of thing that I'd buy if I hadn't bought that Shell one already. But I didn't actually bring that much money with me. So I only bought about 60 or so and I spent about 50 of that already. This is an interesting one I did not have a look at earlier. A few nice cans on here, a nice Lucas battery filler. Those are quite rare little bits of kit being glass. Loads of car badges. Texaco boy as well. But if anyone would like to see videoing or sort of these auto jumbles and looking around, because they are interesting places, you do see a lot of stuff, then please do let me know in the comments. And if you like any of the wonderful classic cars here, which I will return to shortly. Quick browse over the American section now, section H, plenty Mustangs, Camaros and stuff, but one car I do want to have a look at is this interesting Dodge now. I know what Dodge Charger usually is, and this isn't that. This is a strange Dodge Charger from 1966. Now, I haven't actually seen the shape of Dodge Charger before. It's very interesting. I like how it says Charger across the rear brake light. I'm sure that all lights up when it breaks, which is pretty cool. Great looking Camaro there as well. Yes, it's an interesting shape. Very rare. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool car. This is one of the ones with the rotating headlights, so that bit of grill will be fake, and then some lovely lights will rotate seemingly out of out of the grill. Here's the Camaro, Jaguar XK, and a Mac One Mustang. Next to the wonderfully huge Massey Ferguson is this very, very cool BMW 3 litre CSL, the E9 shape of BMW. A genuine CSL from 1972, found 20 years ago. Many, many stickers. This is the sort of Batmobile, one of the most extreme ones, all the spoilers, all the crazy wide arches. Yeah, good looking cars these. It's been sat in a lockup for years, the owner restored it, very cool. There's a bit of action going on in the arena now, which we will have a look at later. But I think before that, let's have a look at this gorgeous post-war Alvis. This is sort of epitomised as sort of 48, 49, of course Alvises are all ash frame. 
Let's talk about Ash Frames with the owner. That's something we've told, but in a bit of a chat there. So these cars are crazy, horrifically expensive to restore, which is great to see this one in immaculate condition. I've got to say, I think this one has been restored at one point. But what a result, you know, it's such a beautiful looking car. I do love Alvises. This probably has a big straight six up front, I can imagine. Super smooth car to drive and gorgeous interior. New little car here is this Morris 8. Now, I believe this is actually a Morris 8 Series E, is it on the front? Oh, it's, a, oh, it's an interesting one. It's got the different lights on the front of this one, isn't it? Yeah. So, usually the Morris 8 would have the domed lights, but this has got the sort of modified ones that slightly come out a little bit more, which is interesting to see. Very cool. Two tone red and black. Do like the look of that. Just post war, this will be. Good looking cars, these. I do like the little Morris 8s. Quite reliable little cars. There's an MGA here, probably quite an early car with that style of rear lights. Very short shift gearbox in this one. Is that, has that gear even been cut down, do you think? First MGA of the day, I think, here. Great looking pair of little cars there. And up here is, oh, I must be seeing double. We've got a lovely, we've got our mates. Mark 1 Cortina Lotus and we've got this second Mark 1 Lotus Cortina which is almost identical. It's both they've both got the sort of the twin Weber carburetors. And that one's got the blue cam cover. This has got the black one. This is a lovely car as well. They really are identical. <laughs> like everything about it. It's identical. Let's have a look at the interiors, you know. Interior to this one. Very, very nice. Interior to this one. Very, very nice. Both Concours. I know this car is definitely a Concours car. It's, I think it won the Concours d'Esprit at the Autumn Park Gold Cup. But, but yeah, we've got this second Mark 1 Lotus Cortina, which is very, very cool on a C plate. So that's 65 or 66. I do love these Weber carbs. Open intakes make a great sound. Remember, Dad was following this car in the MX-5, and he did say it does go pretty well, and it will sound fantastic. Beautiful, beautiful cars, these. Now this is an interesting rare car. Five seconds to guess what it is. That's probably about five seconds now. This is a Sunbeam Rapier, but quite a late car actually. One of the much, much later variants of the Sunbeam Rapier with that fast back top, which is quite cool actually. I do like that. These are rare cars. Ford Anglia there, probably an Anglia Supio and some nice steel wheels. I like the look of that. This, I'm surprised there's loads of really nice early cars. Western Park usually get the earliest sort of stuff you get is probably 50s, but there's loads of sort of 40s and pre-war stuff. There's a good amount of pre-war stuff here, which is nice to see. Next up is this wonderful MGA. This is a 1600 car, so one of the smallest engines. This is exactly how I'd have one. Nice, cool racing numbers, you know, specialised racing helmet. That's quite cool. Yeah, done up as a little bit of a racer. Very cool little car. Just beyond that is a Rover P4, 105, so this will be a six-cylinder engine Rover P4. And one of the earlier shaped Rover P6s. Many of the Rover P6s we've seen today have had the sort of plastic type front, the black front, but this has got the chrome, the tin grille across the front, which is the earlier design of the Rover P6. Very interesting, very original as well. Now, what is this Citroen Traction Avant? I said the other one was a heavy 15 or light. Well, the light was this morning, the heavy, but this is a super heavy 15. What is this? We've got a limousine Citroen Traction Avant. Never seen this before. French registered, so left hand drive. So it's not, not one of the slough built cars. Of course, being front wheel drive, this one's always going to be a bit muddy, but that is incredible. It's so, so long. I've never seen one like this. This has got to be a special body. It's got a 1956 AA handbook. That's what we've got in the standard as well, because that's a 56 car. But this is this is an incredible thing. Never seen that. Anything like that. It's such an incredible... It's just so long. What an amazing car. Nice little Austin 7 box saloon. I was talking about, you know, I like the pre-war cars. And we're actually getting a really good showing of pre-war cars. You know, these have got dead skinny tyres. So they will actually be better on the mud than a lot of the cars here. That's an incredible thing, though. 1954, actually, the tax disc on that one. So, lovely little Austin there. And the Morris 8. This is a Morris 8... Morris 8 Series 2 here because we got the steel wheels as opposed to the spokes of the earlier Series 1, which is basically the same car. Morris 8's quite advanced their time because under here we have some nice hydraulic brakes, which means these cars do stop quite well. 
It's a quite an advanced car for their time, probably more advanced than the likes of the Austin 7. And the Hillman Husky as well here, very, very cool. Seen this car plenty of times before. Nice thing, that. I do like this Morris 8 as well. Nice Blue Mel's original plates on it as well. Bit of a two-wheeled section here, a couple of little mopeds, I don't know that much about bikes I'm afraid. There's a lovely old looking Triumph, nice original condition that one looks to be in. One of these huge Honda Goldwing things, the huge three-wheelers. Got quite a showing for the modified section and interestingly, that Volvo there is the P1800 that has the sort of Ford Thunderbird rear lights and it's interesting how that is in the modified section, so I think it has actually been modified with the different rear lights. If you remember that from earlier, it's like Ford Thunderbird lights. So hopefully you haven't been skipping through the video and don't know what I'm on about. So yeah, that is the modified Ford, what am I on about Ford? Volvo P1800, got the modified Saab 96 as, as a turbo. And then we've got this little thing here, you know, let's nip under here and have a look at what this is. Oh, I've got no clue what this is. Oh, it's a little, but it's got a Fiat badge on it, but I'm not actually convinced whether it actually is like anything custom made or something. Yeah, that's an interesting one. That probably should have listened to the interview. Maybe I would have got it a little bit better. I like his hat. I rate the hat. But yeah, as you can see, we've got these incredible rear lights on this Volvo, which must be why it is in the modified section, I must say. Those do look absolutely fantastic on it. They probably even look better than the original Volvo P800 lights. I really love the look of those. Actually, now I've seen the back of that little Fiat thing. It isn't actually a Fiat 500, but it's been cut down into a sort of little roadster thing, which is a curious creation. So yeah, it's a little Fiat 500 that's had the roof chopped off and it's been made to look like this, which is very, very interesting. <laughs> what a cute little car that is. <laughs> it's so sort of... I want to be kind, but it's so badly proportioned, but it's just quite funny at the same time. Also in the modified thing, we've got the Saab 96, the V4, with that very tasty turbocharger on the side there, and the Nova. Incredible roof on these, isn't it? He's been sat in there a while, hasn't he? He used to stay hydrated. <laughs> Market Drayton Minis Club stand here with many nice mini variants, including this wonderfully early. Now, is this even not even a mini? This might even be just identified as the Austin 7, which was the name before the actual manufacturer called it mini. Yeah, so this is the Austin 7 before it was actually called the mini. Lots of nice period accessories. In there, that's great to see all that. So this actually technically isn't a Mini, this is an Austin 7, but no, not the pre-war. The Austin 7 is what these Minis were called during the very, very sort of first ones that were made. A bit more Rado 16, good to say. This is a Morris 1300 as opposed to the 1100 we saw earlier, so the big engined one. This guy has got a bit of muddy wheels, I hope he cleans out his arches later. Let's do him a favour. There you go, that's my community service for the month. Of course, these are actually front wheel drive, aren't they? So this should be the one caked with mud. Well, it doesn't quite seem to be. So, a practical car. That would have been ever at once, but now, very, very rare. Very original as well. And just behind, I think I can say the same for this wonderful Mark 1 Escort. A few more club stands to check out now. This show is just never ending. Got a Triumph TR3 or 3A. I can't remember the difference. It's something to do with the door handle on the outside. I think door handle on the outside means 3A. I think paying a Triumph TR6 is very nice. A Triumph TR8. Now, this is a rare beast. This obviously looks like a Triumph TR7, but a TR8 has got a 3.5 litre V8 engine, which is very cool. Next up is a Triumph TR250. No, not a TR5. TR250, which is originally the American market car so this is running on carburetors instead of the um, injection system and this has been since converted to right hand drive which is very cool Triumph TR6 very muddy tyres on every car here Triumph TR4A that's a nice car that it's been a while since I've seen this car actually yeah I recognise it now it's been a long time since I've seen this one very nice, so pretty much identical Triumph TR4 just a TR4 so TR4 and TR4A 
Nice Triumph TR3A here as well. Triumph TR4, TR250 as well. Now this is an unconverted left-hand drive one, so this one's still left-hand drive. Obviously running on carburetors as is American market. This TR6 will be running on the injection, being a UK market car. TR4 here, huge tyres on that. That must be quite heavy steering. Nice hard top on this TR4A, is it? Um, oh no, this might be a uh, left and dry. Let's have a look. Is it TR250? Ah, uh, TR4A, but an American, mar or not necessarily American, but probably American foreign market left and drive TR4A, which is quite cool. Yeah, it's a good looking car. One of my favourites too, actually. Left and drive, great colour, great hard top. Very, very nice. Very nice Triumph stand here. Triumph TR4. TR6, a couple of TR6s here. Great cars, these make a lovely sound out of the engine. A lot of the cars here are very similar engines. Jaguar Enthusiast Club Stand will start off with this wonderful Jaguar XK140. XK straight six, of course, in these. I love the shape of the body of these. Nice four spoke steering wheel, the original interior. I like the little Goodwood paddock sort of plaque thing hopefully you can see that just there that's a nice little addition to the walnut dashboard i think it's walnut isn't it probably on a car like this a few more modern jags i do like the look of this s type here i haven't seen any mark ii jags here today actually this is a 3.4 s type automatic it's nice nice color that isn't it actually i do like that this would be a really nice usable car beautiful interior as well so an automatic three and a half 3.4 sorry xk straight six in this one nice car that series three daimler the double six from 1986 a few more modern jaguars an xk xk over here slightly older generation and the slightly newer generation here Porsche Targa's off to the arena now. Good looking cars, those. And with you exposed in the elements, that must be a good drive. This Bedford CA Dormobile will also managed to slip through the net. These are incredible things. I'm not usually one for camper vans, really, but I do really like these. Looks as if the Rover P4 will be off for the pre 60s arena as will be the A40 Somerset. Very distinctive old car sound there. The raspy four cylinder and the smooth six. Real quality car, these P4s. Yeah, it sounds super smooth. Bit muddy tyres. Yeah, you probably can't hear it, but that sounds really smooth. Whenever I hear a Rover P4, the engines just sound really sort of right. They're running just right. Lovely Porsche 912. Of course, the four cylinder in the back of these rather than the flat six. What a beetle DNA going on in there. Sorry, I just had to say it. <laughs> this Escort we saw earlier is actually a real rarity because not only is it automatic, but the steering wheel is on this side. So it's left hand drive. I'm going to guess US market just because that was where a lot of British cars seem to go. But yeah, automatic left hand drive Ford Escort. I think that's the only one of those here today. 289 Mustang on the move. Real rarity next to the Alpine V6 we saw earlier is this Alpha Sud Sprint 1.5. Like a mini GT V6, isn't it? It's a rare thing that. Right and drive, interestingly. Looks to be just a little four cylinder. Very strange engine setup actually in there. You've got this huge strut bar coming across. <laughs> Another one that has slipped through the net is this Volvo 345 DL. Now look at the decals on this one. That is some really jazzy. Is it decals? I think it's called decals. On this one, wow. This is really jazzed up with its black pinstriping. Thank you. 
the bank of mum and dad has come in handy. I've run out of money today, but I'm two days off my YouTube monthly payment. You guys watching my videos are much appreciated because I'm meant to be saving up for first car insurance, but I've just spent... Oh, I dread to think how much I've spent today on oil pours and stuff. I won't buy any for a while, but yeah. Lovely SO Pora, pre-war design, beautiful condition. That will be going into the Ned the Shed and Fred the Shed collection, along with all the other delights I purchased earlier. Well, I think now I'm pretty much done filming all of the wonderful classic cars here at the Western Park Classic Cars. Let's get into that point of the day where people start packing up and heading off. So please do remember to subscribe and also if you see any of these leaflets on the front of any of our cars at any car show please take one and put one on your car because it's all, it all helps to promote and if you recognize any, any of us and see any of us at shows quite a few people have come up to me today be friendly and say hello because we'd love to chat to you and um, it's good to believe that people are actually sitting behind their computers watching us talk about cars and old junk so <laughs> please do comment below if you like this sort of thing if you like any of the cars here make sure to subscribe to make sure you don't miss out on any future uploads and if you cannot wait for next Sunday at 7.30am for some unknown so far automotive upload then please check the channel homepage for past videos but for now that's our day done at the Western Park Classic Car Show 2024 thanks for watching